Hey 4-H'ers, hope you're doing okay today. This is Glenn with 4-H. We just wanted to give you some information in this virtual world about our project work this year. This will be your project work uh, virtual workshop to give you credit for an outside event. Each of you are going to receive either a project folder if you're fifth grade and up project folder may look like this. It may be a vanilla folder. Then fourth graders, everybody's going to get an Exploring 4-H book. We just want to take this opportunity to update you as to what you need to do to make sure these books are complete so you can meet some of the requirements from the awards that are available this year. More importantly than that, it's just an opportunity for you to learn about yourself, learn about a particular project area, set some goals, have some new skills that you learn, and then we've got these opportunities for awards. So let's, let's get the awards part out of the way first. Just let you know if you're going to work in these things, let me encourage you and challenge you to set a goal this year. Folks who set goals, typically more successful. We do that with sports teams we're on. Do that individually with accomplishments. Set your goal to get the Golden Eagle Award. This Golden Eagle form will come with your project work. It'll give you opportunity to get a pass from Ben and Jerry's for some ice cream. Matt Quest has an activity, some activities for us there. We get a pass there. We get a pass to Anakista in Gatlinburg. We get a pass to the island. We can do some of the activities that are there, some rides, the ropes course that are there. Everybody likes Chick-fil-A. Got food from Chick-fil-A. In addition to that, you'll get a pretty cool Golden Eagle Special Edition t-shirt for you. What do we need to do to make this happen? We need to participate in each of the club month activities. January, we're going to do the posters. Let's go back to November. We're going to do public speaking. February, we're going to do an essay. We keep Severe Beautiful. March, we're going to participate in the photography contest. So we need to participate in each of those monthly activities. We don't have to win any of those things. We're just going to participate and be involved in that. We need to do one virtual county event. Guess what? Today you've taken care of this. Next 20 minutes you've taken care of your outside event. We need to complete the project book. We're going to talk about that more in detail in a minute. We need to give a talk or a demonstration related to our project work. We're going to talk about that in more detail in a minute. We need to do a service project. We need to help others in our community simply helping others. You might participate in your classroom with a tuna project that helps the food ministry. You might do something individually at home. You might participate in one of the cleanup projects through Keep Severe Beautiful. That would count. You might do something through another club, through your church you're involved in, where you're helping others in the community. So we're going to do all those things. We're going to fill out the form that's here, check off the things that you participated in, List the activities that you've done, such as the service project, the date that you did your project or report, project talk demonstration out of your book. You're going to complete your project folder. When that's completed, we're going to simply take this form, put it in with your project folder, turn it in by April 1st, 2021. Guess what? You're in line for that nice prize package. So if we're going to complete this project work, Let's do these other things. Make sure we get that done so we can recognize you in that way. So what does it mean to have a complete project folder? Okay, Fourth graders, everybody has the Exploring 4-H book. Inside that 4-H book, you'll have a letter that basically explains what we're going to do. Everybody works together. Everybody's doing the same work. Fifth grade and up, you'll get to select an individual project. Fourth graders, we are exploring 4-H. We're learning what 4-H is all about. Okay, So in this book, there are different activities. First couple of pages just talk about what 4-H is, some background about 4-H. There's some matching activities that we do. So to complete the book, we just need to complete the activities it suggests on each page. Third page here talks about careers that we can explore in 4-H, specifically when we get older. Then there's some sections that just introduce the different 4-H projects, the natural resource type projects. There's an activity here related to forest and what forests do for us. There's an activity related here to learning a little bit about insects, 
what makes an insect an insect. There's a section here related to animal projects that are available in 4-H. Here's an activity you can do with your pet. If you don't have a pet, what would your dream pet look like? And explore some things related to it. You can draw a picture. You can put a picture of your pet in here. We have some activities, some projects related to uh, ourselves, uh, to food and nutrition, to exercise. Here's an activity related to making sure we're moving every day. Here's an activity related to foods. Here's an activity related to the different food groups and what they provide for us. So those things related to food science, related to personal development, those projects are introduced. Then we've got some activities here related to engineering and safety science. Some of those kind of ideas, just some measurements, some estimation, some things related to that. This might look similar to some of your classwork at school. Then there's a section here related to money management where we explore the difference between needs and wants. And then we do some comparison shopping. You might go to the store and compare some items. So each of these activities introduces you to individual 4-H projects that when you get older you'll be able to select some projects that you would like to work in. So to complete the Exploring 4-H book, we answer the questions, we do the suggested activities that are there, and then on the very last page we simply write a 4-H story. Just tell us about yourself. Tell us about your 4-H project work. Tell us about the activities that you did this year, the things that you tried, the things that worked out well. Maybe there's some things that did not work out so well. Tell us some things that you learned. You see there's a place for at least one page, and I would suggest it be one page. If you want to put in a sheet of notebook paper and add more to that, please do. If you want to put some pictures in here, of you doing some of the activities. You can do that. Now we don't want a great big scrapbook, but if you want to slide in some pictures and things of you doing the activities, you complete the book, complete each activity in the book, and then write a story at the end of the year, and then slide that in with your Golden Eagle form. If we're going to do this, let's do those other activities. You have a complete project book for fourth grade. Okay. We would like to mention one of our sponsors here on the back, Farm Bureau Insurance, Mr. Jason Whitaker and our Severable Office. Great sponsor, great support. If you do business there, go in there sometime and just say thank you for supporting 4-H. They supply the money that gives us opportunity to print exploring books for each person. Also, they supply some money that we'll pay for various awards, ribbons, plaques, trophies that are presented throughout the year. So thank you to Sevier County Farm Bureau. So fourth graders, that's your option. Fifth grade and up, we mentioned a minute ago, you'll get some type of folder. In that folder, it will have some individual project sheets related to the project that you select. Here's a couple of examples, the dog project, the food science project, one more here, the engineering safety project. All of these are very consistent in the format that is given here for them. So when you're looking at the 4-H project work, what we're going to expect you to do is to look. You'll see some suggested learning activities listed on each one. Here's about 10 for the dog project. Here's several for the food science project. I would suggest that you decide three or four of these and set them as your goals. For example, in food science, learn 10 safe handling food uh, procedures for raw foods. Learn how to properly store foods from the different food groups. Create your own recipe and share it with family or friends. Just pick out three or four of those and say, these are going to be my goals for the year. The dog project. Learn the different breeds of dogs. Learn the difference between spaying and neutering. Conduct a demonstration with your dog. Learn several ways that dogs help people. Learn how to control diseases. Learn about feeding your dog. Okay? So pick out three or four of those things to do. Set them as your goal. And then your project worksheets here, we have a sheet that says thinking ahead. What we want you to do, it says here, what I want to learn in this project. What are my goals? Where are we going to find our goals? We're going to find them right here on our project sheet. So just list them. 
How do I plan to reach those goals? It may mean you need to read a book. You may need to do an internet study. You may need to go to a veterinarian and talk to a veterinarian. So just fill out this thinking ahead. Then after you filled out the thinking ahead, we want you to look at the individual project sheet and each one has various activities for you to do. Again, our goal is to target what we set we want to learn. The dog project, the different parts of a dog, some facts about the dog, dog selection guide, okay? The food science project, there's just some different activities related here to food science. Engineering and safety science, very consistent. You will also notice with each, there is some type of word search or matching game. There's also a career scavenger hunt. <clears throat> we would like for you to concentrate on it. Basically, identify a career related to what your subject matter is. A dietitian for food science, a veterinarian would fit for the dog project. Ask them some questions. Very simply, list the job title, what's, how's the job described, and then education required. I would encourage you to come up with a list of maybe five questions. Instead of just putting it here, maybe a sheet of notebook paper where you list, this is the job, ask some questions. What might I expect to learn uh, on a pay scale? You know, what are the things that you like about your job? What are the things you dislike about your job? Tell me the requirements for your job. What does a typical day look like? And that would be a little more exciting. If you list those things and put them on a sheet of notebook paper, you've got that there. We also need to do a service project related specifically to your project. And there's some ideas there related to it. There's some additional resources that you can do. So basically, you have your project you've selected, hopefully something you are interested in, you do lots of activities related to that project so that you can understand and learn related to whatever the project is. The dog, you're learning more about dogs. Food science, or you're learning how to handle food safely. You're learning how to cook. Engineering and safety science, you're learning how to take apart a motor, put a motor back together. You're learning some things about bicycle safety. You take that where your interest is. Then what we would like to do at the end of the project is, in your project material, you've got a place to write a 4-H story. Just tell us who you are, where you live, tell us about your project, why you selected that project, some things you tried, some things you learned, some things that you might do different, and then some things that uh, you might want to try in the future. Again, if you want to put more than that one page, that would be great. We also have a form here where we evaluate what we've learned. What did you learn this year? Hopefully you've done these activities, you've learned some new skills, some learned some new knowledge. Did you meet your goals? Is it okay if we don't meet all our goals? Sure it is. Sometimes we learn more when we don't totally meet our goals. And there could be varying reasons why we did not meet our goal. Just explain that, okay? So fill out the looking back. We've already filled out the thinking ahead. And then we've written a story about what we've done. Basically, you just want to tell us what you've learned so that we can understand that you have an understanding of working in the project area and we can see that you've completed those activities. Then here is just a simple checklist that you can check off what you've done. We've done the project plan, we've thought ahead, we've evaluated, you filled out the looking back section, skills that you've learned, you've completed the activities in your project, you've done the career scavenger hunt, you've done a service project. We need to do a talk from our project folder. We'll talk through that in just a minute. And then we're going to write a one-page story. And we're going to put all those things together. Our goal is by April the 1st to have this completed, April 1st, 2021. We're going to enclose our Golden Eagle form. Because remember, we do this. We need to do those other activities so we can get the nice prize package. Everybody needs a nice prize package, right? Put that in. Put it with your folder. Have it ready to come to the 4-H office by April 1st. If you're in the school, simply have it with your teacher. We'll come by the schools and pick those up. 
If you're working independently from the school, you would need to have those at the 4-H office by April the 1st. Okay, so make it your goal. Fourth graders, exploring book, fifth grade and up, you're going to have some type of project folder with these record sheets. Everyone has the Golden Eagle Award. Okay, so let's talk very quickly in the time we've got left related to making a project report or a demonstration. Let me give you some simple ideas. Here's an idea out of the fourth grade exploring book talking about the parts of an insect. Now many times when we give a project report in our 4-H meeting, somebody will just say, stand up and say, I did the insect activity. I've got the dog project and my dog is named Sam and I feed him three times a day. Probably don't need to feed your dog three times a day, but you get the point. It's kind of boring if we could look at it that way. So let's bring a simple illustration. Nothing fancy here, piece of poster board, what are the parts of an insect? When we're identifying insects, insects have three parts, three body parts, a head, a thorax, and abdomen, okay? Insects have six legs. This makes it a little more exciting, okay? You're talking about the dog project. You might bring some pictures of your favorite breeds of dogs. Nothing fancy here, pictures from the internet. If you want to share some facts about the different breeds, you could just have it attached to the back here and simply read off. These are my favorite breeds of dogs, okay? Here's one where it has that information on the front. My favorite breeds of dogs. Let me tell you about the beagle. This is what I like about the beagle, okay? You can also take this when you're finished with it. You could say, uh, Miss Jones, uh, my teacher, whoever your teacher is, can we hang this up in the hall? And most likely, Ms. Jones is going to say, sure, we can do that. Hang it up in the room, hang it up in the hall. It becomes a, a demonstration that we've shared in our classroom, but it's also uh, something that other folks can see. I can't remember exactly what we call that right now, but it's a presentation that can be seen as an exhibit. That's the word I'm looking for. It's an exhibit that can be used in the room to share our knowledge. Okay? Also, here is a simple demonstration that's a little more detailed that I would like to share with you related to bicycle safety. You can see there's nothing real fancy about it. I've got what I'm going to say right here behind it. Bicycle safety. Bike riding is a lot of fun. I like to ride my bike as you do, but it's, infor it's important that we be safe. Purpose of my demonstration today is to share with you some basic safety skills, rules. Every year, over 175,000 kids go to the emergency room because of bike accidents or injuries. These injuries can happen anytime, anywhere, but if we remember some safety rules, perhaps we can avoid some of those injuries. Number one, we always need to wear a helmet. While broken bones can heal, a head injury can lead to death or permanent disability. Every person needs the protection of a good helmet. It's important that our helmet fit properly. Also, we need to obey the safety signals. Bicycles must follow the rules of the road just like other vehicles. And you can see some of those uh, right here. Okay, we never, need, we never need to ride against traffic. And you can see it's okay sometimes you don't get it all right as I'm spitting and sputtering here. Ride on the right-hand side, we go in the same direction that uh, a car would go as we're going down the road. And then we want to use some hand signals. This would be a right-hand turn. This means I'm going to stop. And this would mean I'm going to make a left-hand turn so others can see what you're, what you're doing. Always, we need to be safe. Remember these safety rules when you ride your bicycle, a safe cyclist is an injury-free cyclist. This concludes my demonstration. Are there any questions? Okay, so that's a simple example. I've got it written here. I just read it off. Takes a little more work. You can see there's nothing fancy here. I've made a few mistakes. I've lost one of my trusty signals right here, but I've just turned it over. So nothing, doesn't have to be anything real fancy, but that's much more effective if you've got some posters and you share some information with your audience. Again, we're glad you're involved in 4-H. Look forward to a great year for you. And just remember these ideas on giving a talk, a demonstration, and these ideas for making sure we have a complete project book. Hope to see you in 4-H soon.